I'm in a lot of turmoil right now, and it feels like everything is falling apart. I have never had a great relationship with my future mother-in-law. It isn't terrible, but I can sense that she doesn't like me. My fiancé is very close to his family, so there has been some tension. I didn't invite mother-in-law wedding dress shopping because our relationship is awkward. Still, I thought I'd show her a picture to make her feel included. My dress is a beautiful flowy beach dress, but not technically a wedding dress and could be ordered in color. I bought it from a small local boutique that we both love. Mother-in-law said that I can't wear the dress because she bought the same one for her 50th birthday, two weeks after my wedding. Mother-in-law does have the dress in a mint green color. There is enough detailing that it is clearly the same dress, and she has the receipt to prove she got it first. Lavish birthday parties are a thing in our circle, so I know she has invested some serious time and money in this party. I said that I will still wear the dress, despite the fact that I could easily return it with no loss, because I didn't do this out of malice, and I love it. However, mother-in-law said if she wears it two weeks after I do, everyone will think she's pathetic and copying her son's wife. I said sorry, but not really my problem. Everyone has gone crazy since I said that. His entire side of the family and friends of mother-in-law that were invited have all backed out of the wedding, so like 15 people, and it will be noticeable. His sisters were supposed to be in the wedding party on his side, but dropped out and have blocked him on everything. His stepdad won't talk to him and says he regrets raising him, and he isn't a real man because a real man would stand up for his mom. His bio dad is even on mother-in-law's side, which doesn't surprise me because they're good friends, but he called us up to shame us the other night. My fiancé is hurting and found out his family had a big beach day and invited everyone but him. He called mother-in-law and they talked but didn't come to a resolution. She said if I refuse to do the right thing, the only answer is no one going to her party can go to the wedding. He tried calling sister-in-law and found out she blocked him. He's mad at me now and feels like she had it first. So am I the idiot? Everyone's the idiot here. To be honest, you kind of walked into this one by purchasing a non-wedding dress from a local boutique that the two of you both like. There was always going to be a distinct possibility of something like this happening because of that. Maybe you can just suggest going dress shopping with your future mother-in-law to find her a new dress for her birthday. 50th birthdays are kind of a big deal. Not like a wedding, but a significant milestone. So I understand that she wants to look nice for it. There's probably a good chance that a large number of the guests at the birthday will have also attended your wedding, so she's not totally out of line for thinking people might say she copied you. Honestly, I think the main issue your mother-in-law has is that you didn't invite her to dress shopping and are brushing her off rudely by saying, not my problem, not the fact that she has the same dress as you. You can wear whatever you want, but at some point you might need to think if this dress is more important than your wedding, because it seems like that might not happen at this point. OP isn't threatening to disown family members over a dress. The in-laws are. OP didn't even tell mother-in-law that she had to change her dress. OP is simply standing up for herself. And if in-laws are willing to go to battle over dress, what else will they attempt to control? OP is not the idiot. Clearly, mother-in-law thinks her 50th is more important than her son's wedding. Honestly, drop every single one of these people out of your life. Not the idiot. These people just show both you and your future husband that they care more about their image than their family. They are willing to miss your wedding and literally kick you out of the family events over a dress? That is absolutely ridiculous. Please do not give in to this manipulation. They are trying to set a standard where they will force you and your husband to do what they want for the rest of your life. This is incredibly manipulative and it will not stop. If you allow this to slip by, it will get more frequent and worse. Yes, but mother-in-law had it first. But no, that shouldn't matter. It would matter if you saw her dress, fell in love, and then bought it. Then you'd be the idiot. But this is not the case. Your fiancé's family seems to me to not have liked you very much to begin with. If they had, someone would have stood on your side. Also, I don't think his family respects him if they're going to make remarks like that. Also, a real man would stand up for his mother? What in the actual... A real man stands up for his wife to be first. Forget red flags. This is a red wedding waiting to happen. Run. I'm Swedish and have lived in the U.S. for about five years. Met my girlfriend three years ago and hit it off immediately. Last week we celebrated her birthday and she had, like usual, 
invited friends to the party. One of them we'll call Linda. The evening was going well. We talked, played games, and had fun. My girlfriend and Linda spoke about some new acquaintance from Germany or something. Linda reached out and had said she had Swedish heritage and was really proud because she spoke the language fluently because her mormor, grandma in Swedish, mom's side, taught her. Well, you can imagine I was thrilled since the only time I get to speak Swedish now is on the phone and online in chats with friends. So I proclaimed in my mother tongue, which translates to cool. Then we can talk a bit in Swedish if you want. It's been a long time since I could speak Swedish with somebody in real life. She looked at me and you could immediately tell from her expression, oh crap. She tried to get back on track and said, sorry you caught me off guard. I didn't know you were Swedish. Could you repeat that? So I said in Swedish, yeah, I thought you spoke a little Swedish. She then said something back, which made it obvious that she knew a few words, but definitely not on a conversational level. Then finally she tried something which, while understandable, is not correct in Swedish. The rest of the night was tense to say the least. She kept looking at me like I ruined her plan and made her the villain. I don't even care if she could speak it or not. I just wanted to talk to someone. The evening went by and they all left. The next day after my girlfriend had a talk with her, she explained that Linda was furious at me for embarrassing her in front of everybody. I told my girlfriend that I did in no way do that since all I did was ask her if she wanted to talk to me. And then I repeat myself since I thought she didn't hear me the first time. I thought she just hadn't activated her ear for other languages, which happens to me all the time. I get just as surprised and miss out on what is said if somebody suddenly speaks in another language that I understand. So now I'm the bad guy, apparently. What do you think? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Linda is a liar. She claimed to speak the language. You talked to her in that language. You didn't know. If someone emphasizes something about themselves, they should be able to perform it when prompted. She shouldn't have said it in the first place. I hope it'll be forgotten and all of you will move on eventually. Not the idiot. Her friend has been dating Gopi for three years. Did she not realize that this would bite her in the butt? Like, what did she expect? She lied about talking Swedish fluently and is shocked that she will be caught when she doesn't respond naturally and doesn't know what to say? OMG! Not the idiot. She's embarrassed, yes. But it's not your fault. That's the risk of claiming to speak a language you don't actually. You may get caught by someone who does. It's perfectly normal for you to get excited and want to speak with her. But she's butthurt because she was trying to look cool and ended up looking dumb. Wouldn't you be angry if you hired a plumber who said they could fix your toilet, come to the house the day of the job, and then starts asking you what different tools are called? You are not the idiot, OP. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Don't lie about being fluent in a language when you have no idea if those around you are actually fluent. She's embarrassed, yeah, but entirely her own fault. No sympathy. My sister isn't the brightest person when it comes to money. We got our inheritance just six months ago, and she's already spent it all. She's a single mom and is getting unemployment checks just to survive. Recently, her son got sick, though, and was sent to the hospital. I put hospital bills in quotes because I'm 100% sure he isn't in the hospital. I asked if I could see him, and she said no as I might get sick. I asked what condition he has, and she refused to tell me. I even asked to video call him, and she still denied me. I don't have a problem giving her money, as I have more than enough, but I told her that if I had no proof, I just wouldn't believe it. She threw a fit and called me a heartless and unreasonable idiot who didn't even care about his family. Now I'm feeling a little bad, but I'm still adamant about seeing proof, which she's against. Am I being unreasonable like she says? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. As a single mom on a budget, if the hospital had some restrictions on visitors, I would absolutely send whatever proof was needed to help my baby. There would be no reason to withhold this information, unless she is lying. She has a right to privacy and to not tell you what his condition is, sure. Still, if she's asking you for a favor and you want to be sure that your money's going where you think it is, then it's perfectly fine for you to ask for proof. It doesn't even seem like you're asking for specific and potentially sensitive information, just some kind of proof like even a video chat. So your request is completely reasonable. Also, I'd have just told her no after she called you heartless because that is textbook manipulation, trying to make you feel bad while leaning on her familial connection. 
not the idiot. If you are really willing to help, still have concerns for the child, but not have the money in her hands, call the hospital billing directly. They will talk to anyone willing to pay a bill. You'll know soon enough if there is a bill to pay or not. Not the idiot. If she's on unemployment, any dependents of hers should automatically qualify for Medicaid, assuming you are in the U.S. Even if he isn't, Medicaid typically will cover three months of retroactive bills. Medicaid also leaves zero dollars to patient responsibility. If he's not already on it and has no health care coverage, a social worker at the hospital would certainly be working with your sister to figure this out. I-28 female work with another woman, 33, who is extremely pregnant. She is on maternity leave and is taking time off right now, but she's very dedicated to keeping our entire office keyed into every little detail of her pregnancy. She spams her ultrasounds and updates and baby bump pictures to the office group chat constantly. She also has already had the baby shower and is requesting more stuff for the baby from us. She treats the baby like it's a child, playing Mozart and playing a math podcast to it, so it will come out with a higher IQ. That's why I wasn't surprised when she showed up to the office for Bring Your Kids to Work Day to make it about her pregnancy. Even though her kid is yet to be born, she started showing all the children her pregnant belly and telling them about it. My other co-worker brought her baby too, who was a boy and one and a half years old. My pregnant co-worker approached him and told him a baby was inside her, pointing at her stomach. She was wearing a dress. The boy misunderstood, since he's a literal baby, and tried to look up her dress to see it. My co-worker was shocked and screamed at him and startled him, causing him to start crying and shrieking and to run to his mom. The mom was furious and started yelling at my pregnant co-worker that she was a lunatic and saying, why is she even here since her kid isn't born yet? My pregnant co-worker started screaming back that this is how creeps start out and that she's the victim and the baby needs to be controlled. She turned to me for backup and I told her she was insane, thinking she's being victimized by a literal baby. She yelled at me that it's no excuse and I'm enabling. Both my co-workers were asked to leave by security. I'm pretty sure her reaction to a baby looking up her dress to find the baby was insane. But maybe I'm losing it. Am I the idiot? Um, what did I just read? You are not the idiot. I'm pregnant and can't even fathom going to work for a bring your kid to work day. The point of that day is to show your child what you do all day. The fetus doesn't care. Plus, babies and toddlers are literally still learning about the world and the concept of growing a human in your body is a weird one to grasp. You can't really blame the kid for thinking you're hiding something under your dress if you tell him there's a baby under there. Your coworker needs some serious help. By this logic, my six-year-old niece, who lifted up my wedding dress over her head in front of the entire audience of my wedding to see if I was wearing glass slippers because she thought I was Cinderella, means a child assaulted me. This woman needs to get a grip the child is barely a toddler. A baby did not victimize her. OP, not the idiot, but your coworker is going to be an insufferable pain in the keister for as long as you work together. Not the idiot. Your coworker is interesting, less insane and more self-centered. If she screams about a toddler looking up her dress, how on earth will she handle having a real baby that bites and throws things? I feel bad for her kid. Way too big of a reaction for a tiny little dude. And if she didn't want so much attention on her pregnant belly, she should shut up about it. This woman is the idiot for thinking that a toddler, a literal baby, was trying to look up her skirt for any reason other than trying to find the baby that she was hiding in there. I also want to add that this woman is insane for using her pregnancy as an attention farm. She may not realize it, but her ultrasound blast could be victimizing other people I don't know you or the people in your office, so I don't know who else may or may not be trying to get pregnant. The last thing anyone needs right now is a random picture from a delivery room, which I feel is coming for you. I'm happy that this woman is pregnant, but she's an idiot for throwing it in everyone else's face. Our parents adopted my sister, Laura, 27, at 12 years old. Unfortunately, she never really bonded to our parents. Laura attended therapy and my parents showered her in love and attention, but they never managed to have a close relationship. I, 24, was the only one with whom Laura was able to open up. 
My grandmother, 87 female, was also very fond of Laura. However, she always rejected her affections, and on many occasions, she was rude to my grandmother. Laura went to college, fully paid for by my parents, at 18, and moved away from home. Our parents paid for her housing and transportation. When she graduated at 22, she cut off all contact with our family. We later found out that her adoptive family contacted her a little after she turned 18, and they kept in touch for the four years of college. Laura waited for my parents to finish paying for her university to move in with her biological parents. Obviously, my parents were devastated, but with a lot of effort, they managed to get out of their sadness and life went back to being normal. We haven't heard from Laura in five years. My grandmother recently passed away and she left an inheritance in a will. Somehow, Laura found out about my grandmother's death and appeared at the meeting where the will was read. The commotion was so great that the reading of the will was postponed. That happened last week. Laura left her contact information with my grandmother's attorney. Today was the reading of my grandma's will, and Laura was there since she's still legally the daughter of my parents, and the lawyer did not want to read my grandmother's will without her. My grandmother left Laura one of her rings, of average value, and approximately 10 US dollars. Compared to what she left my cousins or me, it's nothing. Laura was furious. She threw a tantrum and said that surely my parents had manipulated my grandmother to make her leave nothing for her. At this point, my dad was crying. I got angry and I told her that she had no right to anything that my grandmother left because she was the one who cut off contact, not us. I also called her some not very pretty names. Laura called me an idiot and left the place. So now my mother is mad at me because she thinks this was our chance to talk to Laura again and re-establish a relationship, and I ruined that opportunity. Not the idiot. Also, your parents are wrong. Laura wasn't there to reconnect. She was only there for the money. OP's mom is blinded by her desperation in order not to see the glaring sign Laura's holding that says, I still don't care about any of you. Not the idiot. Laura cut contact for five years after your parents finished paying off her university fees, and now she's throwing a tantrum? because she thinks she's entitled to your deceased grandmother's stuff? She's entitled and sounds like a giant idiot. She did you a favor when she cut contact and she should have stayed away. Your parents are still grieving and Laura was a massive idiot to show up when they were grieving the loss of your grandmother and potentially try to take advantage of that emotional state. Not the idiot. Laura sounds like she showed up with her hands out. I highly doubt she would have stayed in contact for one minute longer than it took to get what she wanted. Your grandmother sounds savage and smart. Generally, if someone in the family has left something, no matter how small, it is very hard to contest a will. It sounds like grandma knew it too. Yep, this was 100% calculated by the grandmother and her lawyer when creating the will. If she had given her granddaughter nothing, contesting would be easy. Obviously, she just forgot about me, but since she gave her something, even small, she wasn't forgotten. She was just left out. Of course, OP is not the idiot in this situation, except maybe for calling her names at the will reading itself. But meh, things get heated sometimes. Hopefully your parents use the same trick that your grandmother did to write her out of their will. Otherwise, go ahead and start preparing for her to ignore you again for years until they pass when she'll slink back in again looking for cash.